everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And this episode is going to be about The Strangers Pray at Night, the sequel that took 10 years to make and came out this mm. year. So it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty new film. Uh, it's almost as new as you can get. Not quite super new because we didn't do it when it was in the theatres, but it's in home release mm. now. So it's pretty, it's, it's fresh. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's fresh as you can get. It's as fresh mm. as the eggs in Tim's fridge. Mm, okay. <laughs> I don't think I have any eggs right now, but sure. Yeah. Well, I don't. I hate eggs. So I don't know mm. why I went to eggs, but I, I hate them. So I love eggs, but uh, yeah, there's not a lot of room in my fridge right now. So. You also love the box. Wait, what's in your fridge? See, now I'm curious. <laughs> well, no, it's just I have two roommates in a very okay. tiny fridge. So it's, all right, okay. Yeah. It's, I have a very small fridge. I was like, well, what's, what's taking up all the room in the fridge? You get no room for eggs. <laughs> I, um, well, uh, this past Monday was uh memorial day and uh my friend had a barbecue so i went over his house and i brought some like a i i, I bought like a bag of frozen hamburgers it was like 16 hamburgers in this bag uh and then someone else brought like hamburgers though and basically we you know we just all ate those first and then we didn't even touch my bag so now i just have like 16 hamburgers and i'm kind of like well i guess i'll just <laughs> This will be my dinner for like the next two weeks, <laughs> just, like, because I don't, I, I, I don't like to really go grocery shopping until like I've kind of exhausted everything. Like I, mm. like I love just to have like a bare kitchen and just be like, well, I guess it's time to get food now, and then just pile it up with food. Then, uh, so yeah, that's what that's what I'll be in for a while. That was that was exciting. That was an exhilarating. <laughs> story tim uh if, we, if this was a first time episode for any new viewers or listeners i'm sure they're sticking around with bated breath well, after that burger story well, uh, well you brought it up so. yeah but i thought it was gonna be something weird like your fridge is full of like you've been like freezing all your semen so you've just got like tubs mm. and tubs of your semen like stock just just in case just in case something happens to the the the, the precious tim jewels and mm. you need to have some semen on stock for like, a later date yeah yeah it's not a bad idea but... <laughs> I've got enough, enough semen to, to fill a boat. A boat. Yeah, the joke was you would stock so much of it, you could actually if you, if you if you actually impregnated enough women with all all the semen you've stocked up, you'd you'd man a whole boat with all the children. Never mind, it was a bad joke. Oh. Okay. Well, that's, I was I was just trying to get worried about accidentally getting the boat pregnant. <laughs> The, the joke was is that <laughs> semen as in sperm and semen as oh, in sailors was, I get you. was the same word, give or take. So Some of your classic wordplay. I got you. I got you. <laughs> See, now I feel depressed that I'm a horrible comedian. <laughs> well, join the club. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been horrible on stage, so you know better than anyone. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> we talk about horror movies on this show. Uh, so, no, uh, Strangers 2. We did Strangers 1 last week and we mm -hmm. talked about it. Um, I like it quite a bit. Tim doesn't think it's bad, but it doesn't do as much for you as it does for me. Warm. Yeah. Uh, so it is with interest that I, I come to you. With, I mean, I suppose I should set up the premise of this. I mean, it's basically a family are, are moving their daughter to boarding school because she's a bit of a, a problem child. You know, she's a teenager. She's not too young. I mean, you know, the, the, the kids are both like you know, sixteen and seventeen. Uh, but the because they are like, uh, they're, they're like one of the. Oh. What, what it, it's like their, their uncle or something like that owns this trailer park by the lake, this holiday getaway trailer park. And because that's near where the boarding school is, that's where they're going to live for like the weekend or something as they drop the, the daughter off at the school. Yep. So they go off there, but on, little do they know that the strangers, the trio of killers from the first <laughs> movie, have already uh, killed the uncle and uh, auntie and have uh, are waiting for them. So now we have a family of victims in this, mm -hmm. this trailer park. So that's the premise of the movie. You thought, I thought you had something you were ready to jump in with. Do you want me to ask the question, Tim? Yeah, we'll do that, then we'll get into it. Okay, ready for the question. Yeah. Did you enjoy The Strangers Pray at Night? Oh, that <laughs> wasn't the question I was expecting, but... Um... <laughs> what else <laughs> like, did you uh, think I was going to ask? I thought you were going to ask me about hamburgers, but okay. Uh, so... Tim, we're off. <laughs> Tim, we have concluded the conversations <laughs> pertaining to both the hamburgers and your semen, right? Both, mm. both have concluded. Ah, my two favorite topics. Oh well. Uh, I think it's the two favorite toppings, but <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, now, 
I, uh, this, I guess I just kind of feel similar about the first one, uh, because this one pretty much, well, I, I feel like the first half is just like pretty much beat for beat, like the same movie as the first one. And then uh, I, I feel like it starts to differentiate itself by the second half. Um, but I don't know. It, 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 I guess it still doesn't really do much for me because it, makes it feel like a little bit uneven and then yeah most of the stuff is just like uh just feels like retreading kind of you know the best little bits uh from the first one i guess what people would expect uh from the first one but i don't know and, and uh, i guess just kind of similar to the first one where i'm like i can't really say that i hate it like when i watch it it's it doesn't bore me or, or except for maybe a little bit in the beginning uh but once like you know the hoary stuff starts happening. It's like, oh, this is okay, I guess. But the hoary stuff. I'm not over the moon. The horary. I, I don't remember the hoary stuff. <laughs> what was that scene? You know what I mean, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I have to say no, that like, I'm mm -hmm. surprised by uh, how you started that, mm -hmm. because your 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 first sort of statement or your first critique was mm -hmm. it's kind of the same and the first half's like beat for beat. Because mm -hmm. I think I disagree with that <laughs> quite a bit, okay. actually. Because um, right. I would say I don't like this as much as the first one. I think this one's mm -hmm. a little bit more generic in places, uh, especially sure. the especially the setup. I thought one one of the things that I liked a lot about the first one was how underused the music was. Like the score was very mm -hmm. subdued, whereas this one's got more of a sort of. It's actually very nineties. Mm -hmm. There was times the main theme that plays was this like main mm -hmm. theme that plays in the score that I thought was like a super nineties slasher movie kind of theme. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I was getting a lot of cheesier yeah. sort of vibes from the music in this one, uh, and the, the loud not noises to mention, like it, here or there. It, yeah, not to mention it has like kind of they're going for, I don't know that kind of hip thing where you throw in like you know well known like eighties songs and stuff. Uh, well, actually, get that. Uh, yeah, it does do that. But the reason I, I'm, I'm I don't know if I like I kind of like it and I kind of want to critique it at the same time. I feel like mm -hmm. the reason why that is. It's because there's that one scene in the first movie where they put on the record, they put on the vinyl mm -hmm. uh, when, they, when, they, when they're like, stalking the one guy, right? Mm -hmm. When Dennis Reynolds shows up, there's that one scene with the vinyl's on and the music's mm -hmm. playing. I feel like in this movie, they're like, oh, we like that scene, so almost mm -hmm. all the kill scenes will have them put on music. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Right? It, felt, it felt like that yeah. thing where they took the one scene from the first movie and decided to do it with every single kill. It was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah. like... um. I no, I, I agree with what you're saying. Where this one does feel like more generic, because uh, like if you're talking about like the style of the film, yeah, I, I do mm. agree that it is different from the first one. But I just mean in terms of like, you know, kind of like a, uh, like on the overall looking at the movie, like kind of like plot wise and stuff. Like, all right, it starts off with you know this time we have a family instead of a couple, but you know it starts off with them having a problem, and you don't really find out what it is, but you know everyone's kind of you know, sullen and dramatic okay, yeah. and talking about it. And, you know, okay. they go to this secluded place and then, you know, you start with like the person coming to the door. I can kind of, um, I, I can kind of see what you're saying when you phrase it like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me, the reason why it's so different, because even though what you said there's true, it, it does start with mm -hmm. like the family's got a problem, the daughter's having trouble and they're going to boarding school. Mm -hmm. But my, my, my difference here and why I think it feels so different to the first one is that this one spends a lot more time with that before the evening like the first one starts with them oh, arriving sure. at the house basically mm -hmm. right but they're, they're already yeah. there they're in the car and they've already arrived this one mm -hmm. is like a more of a again a generic kind of like 90s slasher movie where mm -hmm. oh no we have the scene of them awkwardly like packing the car and then awkwardly driving and then being at yeah. the diner and having the awkward moment between the mother and daughter and like it, it, it's really drawn out and it's like full of mm -hmm. all this setup one of the reasons why I like the first one so much is I feel like, all on the one little flashback I thought was too much, mm -hmm. it kind of neatly got the point across in a really kind of simple, realistic way that made you go, mm -hmm. oh, what's going on here? I, I think I kind of can guess it. Whereas this one, I felt like it was a lot more kind of forced, like, family drama. If oh, you will. without a doubt, yeah. yeah. Like, to, to me, what it feels like is it, it feels like they're trying to redo a lot of the, I guess, you'd, like, a lot of, like, the beats and kind of stuff from the first one but just not in a very good way like yeah like you said they're doing it more generic and maybe also trying to incorporate i guess kind of the more cliche modern stuff like you say and like you know jump scare stuff and like loud stings and yeah that kind of bullshit some loud stings I, that, that was probably the most disappointing thing about the movie to me is that 
they, they, they do a few of those scenes where yeah you've got one of the strangers like in the background of the scene but instead of them just kind of like appearing in the background most of the time it would just cut to them already being there and it was kind of this yeah. like loud sting as the person's behind them and it, just, it didn't mm-hmm. feel as effective I, I feel like the direction because the, the script was co-written by the writer director of the first one but he didn't mm-hmm. direct this and i feel like the direction is not as strong uh as the first one that's not to say that i didn't like this though at least mm-hmm. you know like I feel like I think the first one's a genuinely good horror movie. This one I feel like it's more of a mm. fun, generic kind of you know, it's it's got sure. cheesy elements and it's not necessarily great. But there's some moments I like, there's some stuff that I thought was fun. Uh mm-hmm. you know, but the characters are definitely a lot more forgettable than I mean oh, not, yeah. not like the characters in the first one were like these great characters that I really mm-hmm. loved, but I thought they were grounded enough that they, they, they didn't feel annoying, they didn't feel like horror movie cliched characters. Whereas mm-hmm. in this one, when the daughter starts like you know being like a little, re- little rebel and arguing with her mother, or her and mm-hmm. her brother are fighting, and I'm like, okay, this is the we're setting up the family before the kill start, yeah, kind of thing. Uh, that, that kind of stuff like drives me crazy because uh, I just don't really care about these characters enough, and it, it's just like all this. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it kind of like feels like very forced drama because it, again, they're like talking about all this stuff, but they don't ever really like explain or show you like you just know like oh she's a bad child and she's going to border school and like I, I feel like they talk about like some incidents or something but they never actually tell you like oh no. you got into a fight and beat up a kid so now we have to do this or blah 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 or whatever or, yeah it's, it's yeah. actually you're right they never actually specify what she actually has been doing mm-hmm. it's just kind of this vague general she's a problem child and has yeah. to go to boarding like, school <laughs> if, if you compare it to the first one like we have kind of like a similar thing with the first one where you know, there's tension between the couple because, uh, you know, the the they propose the the guy the guy proposed to the girl and she kind of turned him down. But they don't actually say that, but you get it all through like context clues and stuff. And like this, it's just you know, it's a lot of vague like, you know, just arguing and you don't know why. Yeah, yeah like I think in the first movie, even without the flashback, the moment the ring box comes out, you understand what's happened. You get it. You yeah. completely get okay. it. Uh, whereas here there's never a moment of okay i understand why they've been this way why what she's been doing what the the core problem is uh because i mean ultimately they, they try and make it into this kind of brother sister thing where they're going to like you know take care of each other by as the mm-hmm. movie goes on and i don't think they ever develop either character enough that i really care about that uh, yeah. and that that's kind of a, a shame I do, I do like that it's a kind of a bigger setting though it's like this sort mm-hmm. of entire big lot next to the lake uh, it's mm-hmm. all these different trailers, so there's a lot more things to play with. Um, I did think it was interesting, and again, I don't know if I necessarily think this is good or bad, but mm-hmm. like everyone remembered the truck from the end of the first movie, so all of a mm-hmm. sudden the truck is actually almost a character in of itself yeah. this time. <laughs> like, there's a lot of the, tr- the truck chasing people down. Obviously, there's someone it, driving it. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. it's that's like kind of one of the things. Um, I, I feel like about halfway through, you start to get more stuff like that, and it starts to get a little crazier, and mm. it actually kind of. The movie kind of turns for me at that point where, like, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily, like, uh, a great film at that point, but it does kind of start to get a little fun and, like, differentiate itself from, yeah. you know, the first movie and stuff more. And I kind of wish maybe it was, like, that kind of big and crazy from the start. I, I feel like I would have liked it more. But, um, yeah, I, I do feel like they kind of start going in some crazy stuff, like, about halfway through that I kind of dug. Especially, like, uh, yeah, with the... Oh, uh, oh, wait for spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. We're spoiler free territory right, right now. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, like, I really like the scene that played out in the swimming pool. Almost all that, of that. That whole sequence was yeah. really great. Yeah. It almost makes me feel like, oh, this would have been really good in, like, another movie. Like, you could have, uh, like, it, it doesn't feel, uh, it's hard to say, cause this is just a second movie of, like, the strangers having, like, a definitive <laughs> feel to it or something, but yeah. that that isn't really what I think of when I, you know, think of it's the not, strangers. Like, I, 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 th- I think of The Strangers being a bit closer, um, certainly closer to Michael Myers, but even not quite like him, because he's still kind of like this constant stalker. He's like a Terminator who's always like coming for you. The Strangers, I feel, are more like my main game type of characters, where they're kind of, they're messing with you, they're in the shadows behind you, and they'll, they'll do things here. And there's a little bit of that in this movie. It's not like completely gone. Um, I I think it's, a, it's frustrating because, like, it's, it's not bad. It, it kind of has that feel of like, okay, this is the sequel that's not bad, but it's not as good as the first one. It's kind of like, sure, you know, you, you're going down to that kind of, okay, it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's worth the watch. Like, 
I don't know if it necessarily feels direct to video, but it could be. I mean, Christina Hendricks is in yeah. it, so that gives it a bit more prestige, I suppose, because I like Christina Hendricks. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's like I, I'm not mad at having to watch it, uh, but I, you know, it's definitely not what I can think of. I would really, you know, have much of a desire to watch again anytime soon. I think it's exactly sort of the, just the the the, the kind of decent fun sort of movie that I I could watch again. It's I mean. As much as I'm disappointed, it's a bit. It's more generic than the first one. It's it's playing with generic things that I kind of like at least. Like you know, I I can't mm-hmm. complain about that. I wish I liked the characters a little bit more. Um, yeah. I, I think that's maybe the the two biggest failings in the movie are the characters not being that interesting or likable, and the direction not being as confident or as inventive with the scares. I, I think that's where mm-hmm. the two real. You know, there's those moments where like I can see what it's about to do, and this could be awesome with the right direction, but and then it'll just do it, and it'll be like, oh, that was disappointing, because the direction just isn't up to task. There's uh, there's one moment in particular I'm thinking of when I say that, that I'll mention in spoilers. Do, but. Uh, do you have the uh, the director on hand? I can okay. tell you the director, yeah. Just scroll up yeah. on my MDB. Uh, uh, Johannes Roberts. Mm. Have, have they done any anything else of note, or anything we can kind of like compare it to, or, or judge it against? Oh, we've actually seen one of his films before. Oh, well, it's going to be either really good or really bad. <laughs> Do you remember, Tim, the other side of the door? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. Ooh well, hey, this to, is a huge step up. It is, yeah, yeah. To, to his credit, this is much better than that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is night and day better than that movie. He also did 47 Meters Down, which I've not gotten to see yet, but shark okay, movie. Yeah. I love my shark movies. Um mm-hmm. And he's done, right. he's done a sequel to it. Guess what the sequel's called? 48 meters down. It is. <laughs> that's what it's called. You know what? That, that's fair. I'll, I'll give that to them. Oh, yeah. So when the trilogy's done, it'll be 47, 48, and 49. <laughs> oh, buddy, yeah. Nice. Well, why start at 47? What was the thing picking up at 47? Uh... I I think there was a reason for it. I think it was like something specific, like uh, where like at that certain depth, uh, like their radios didn't work, or there was something where like that's not the kind of depth that you can like rise too easily without you know getting uh, the bends or something. Uh, that, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> There's some significance to it. I don't remember. All right. They also had a movie called F, which I think I've seen actually. Mm. Uh, F aka the expelled. Mm. Um, I think I saw that, and I think it was terrible. No. So, you know, the sequel to that will be G. <laughs> 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 nah, I think you go the opposite. You go A plus. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and it's like the valedictorians that are getting killed. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's a, a some type of thriller or something. Well, the first one, I believe it was all the kids in detention who were getting Fs that were getting killed. I think, from what oh, I remember. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I'm thinking the sequel, you go A+, and it's all the smarty pants. <laughs> They're getting celebrated at this, this, I don't know, a prom just for the, the smarty pants. <laughs> and a killer shows up. Oh my god. Imagine if there was just like a prom for just smart people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we yeah. wouldn't know. We wouldn't be invited. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I didn't completely catch that, so I'm not sure exactly if it was an insult or not. I mean, it kind of was, but I, I put myself in the same boat, so... Oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. Oh, we're back fair. to boats and seamen. Look at that. We've come full circle. <laughs> uh, no, no, I said uh, we wouldn't be invited, Tim. Oh, uh, okay. Because we're too cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim, uh, that's it. We're too cool. Because we're dumb. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm too cool. You're too dumb. Hey, <laughs> I'll have you know, I uh, was part of the National Honor Society in high school. Which you hesitated meant... too long before you said that. You're making this up. <laughs> I was trying to think of what the exact name was, uh, <laughs> but I think that meant you had to have like an average of either like an A or B plus, something like that. Mm, standards. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh... I used to be very smart. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. I, got I, just, I stopped caring. Uh, I, I think I uh, 
think it was, that was around the time like when I first discovered comic books, and then I just stopped wanting to learn about <laughs> anything else. <laughs> but there's comics, video games, and movies. I don't need to do anything else. Let's, let's yeah, do this for the rest of my all... life. Yeah, I mean, who wants to learn about history when, like, you know, or who wants to learn about, like, American history when you got, like, the Marvel Universe history or, like, that kind of stuff to learn? Like, that's much more interesting. Yeah, or, or DC Universe, uh, to be more, more accurate, but yes. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, come on, crises, things are happening. <laughs> anyway, back to the Strangers Pray at Night. We got off track. Uh, How is Prey spelled? Uh, with the E, I believe. I know yes. it, it is. I was just setting you up to inform everyone. Okay, I thought you were asking a question that you were going to say, oh, maybe there's like a, a meaning, or maybe something different. Like, like you're, you're praying for survival. So it's, it's for the A. I guess that's what the joke is, is that, like, you know, usually people say their prayers at night, and then, uh, but this is like, oh, no, it's pray at night, but you're not praying, you are the prey. I don't, think I, ever, kinda... I don't think I ever assumed it was, like, a play in words. I, I just assumed it was, like, you know, like animals that hunt at night because those do exist <laughs> sure yeah. yeah yeah so i just uh, took it as that but i don't know I, I thought there's you know some type of connection with it being at night but i don't know e either way i think it's kind of a clunky title but that's fair i feel like yeah. the strangers too would have been would have been fine uh oh yeah definitely I, this doesn't feel like a um you know uh oh what do you what do you call those extra words? You not just subtitle. That has to be like another name for it. Ah, uh, no, subtitle. <laughs> just subtitle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, Strangers doesn't feel like a movie that has when the titles have subtitles. I feel like it's. A, I feel. I feel like Strangers is when we go the Strangers part two. Yeah, I can see that. I feel that's what you yeah. should call it. But I mean, hey, the third one just skip right to straight to Roman numerals. <laughs> Make everyone <laughs> mad. The Strangers, the final chapter. Yeah, and then I'm probably someone would do like a some dumb origin story like the strangers the beginning. Oh God, Don't give them ideas. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. Uh, so I, I'm going to spoilers then. So full spoilers for right. the strangers, so we can actually talk about various things. Um, I mean, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised in retrospect when I think about the, what the movie is actually focused on, but I was kind of surprised at the time that Christina Hendricks dies first. Yeah. I was yeah, like, she's, a, she's a star. Like, what are we doing here? But no, nah, yeah. she goes first. And then the dad dies, and then it's the kids. It's the, the teenagers working together, which makes mm -hmm. sense. They're the most vulnerable because they're the stupid ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they're the children. Yeah. But children are stupid, so they're, they're, therefore, stupid children. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but hey, so, so you, you, you've got... Um, you guys, you got some big moments that, that I did like. The swimming pool scene is, I think, is a standout of the whole thing. Uh, because at this point, uh, like, you know, the girl's been hurt. Uh, was it? K Kinsey. Kinsey. Kinsey, yes. Ken Kinsey's been hurt. Her leg's hurt. Uh, and... It's, yeah, like, stabbed. Yeah, she, yeah, like, get stabbed. Uh, so, so the brother, like, hides her away. He's like, hey, you stay here. I'll go get help. And he grabs a golf club, because uh, that's just what's handy. And he ends up at the swimming pool, and, you know, like a lot of the, 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 the tense moments in the movie, like a song starts playing, like the killers put uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart starts playing over the PA system. And, and, the, and like the whole kind of pool area lights up, so yeah. it has this kind of cool look to it because there's like these neon like palm trees and stuff in the background and the pool's yeah. lit up. Yeah, obviously this is when, it, when this place is functioning as, as a holiday getaway, this is like what they do at night, is you come at the pool and hang yeah. out. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, after that, I did actually really, the, the, I feel like a lot of the times where the strangers would like pop up in the background of a scene, I was mostly disappointed in this movie compared to the first one because I had these expectations of, oh, this is how it should feel and look. And most of the time, I feel like there was no punch to it. The one time I really liked it is when the Betty Boop looking one runs out here in this scene. And, that was really cool. Yeah, and he actually hears her coming and he actually swings his golf club and just hits her in the face. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's actually I... a really good moment. Yeah, I really like that. Like, one thing I kind of liked about this that, um, I wasn't as crazy about with the first one is uh, that the like the first one you, you never feel like anyone gets any like good hits in on the strangers like mm. I, I like I feel like I'd be okay with the strangers still winning but it feels like there is absolutely no you know hope in the first one and I like this that the 
you know, the people do actually get their licks in. And it did, it did kind of feel cathartic to, yeah, see him, like, just really swing and, like, you know, just nail uh, that girl. Almost, almost too much, actually, because, I mean, we're on spoilers. All three of them get killed. Like, I was no more very strangers. surprised about that. Because yeah. actually, <laughs> Except what I... for the ending makes you, I don't know, gives a little bit of a bullshit, like, oh, oh the end, something. But... The ending's stupid. We'll get to the ending yeah. later. <laughs> uh, but, but, like, because when, when the, the first, like, I'll just call them the daughters, even though I don't know if they're actually father and daughter, but when, when mm-hmm. the first daughter died, I actually had this guest where the movie might go at the end that both the girls would get killed and this brother sister would become the new strangers with the dad like they'd get so messed up oh. they'd get so messed up from going through this experience that he would kind of recruit them almost and i thought that's where it was going to go and it didn't they all just died but <laughs> i, I, I kind of like that though i think that yeah that would have yeah. been interesting because because what i thought was interesting is when like they never seem scared like when you when the girls realize they're going to die like, because there's one where the mask that like, gets pulled off out in the road, and mm-hmm. she's not like scared or begging for her life. She's just, you know, this is the moment from the first one where the girl, you know, the Kinsey asks, "Why, why are mm-hmm. you doing this to us?" And instead of the your home line from the first one, and she's like lying there dying. She's just been shot with a mm-hmm. shotgun, and she's like, "Why not?" And she submails yeah. and she says it, and then you know, Kinsey's like, "Screw this!" And she shoots on the <laughs> shoots her again with a shotgun, <laughs> right? and. And I, I like I liked it going this way because I, I was actually thinking as I was watching it that yeah like after having the first movie where the the strangers are unstoppable and there was no hope right you go aliens with the second one you have someone fight <laughs> back right yeah. you have this time it's war and I was actually thinking early on like the sequel to the strangers should basically be your next where mm. you've got the the character who's actually that damn good at taking care yeah. of herself that she can fight back. Like, that should be the sequel. Uh, and they kind of dip into that here or there where she does kind of mm-hmm. fight back. But it's not like she's confident. It's not like she's actually skilled. She's just kind of lucky now yeah. and surviving. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, you're bringing up some good points. Like, I, I think it might have been um, more interesting if... Um, yeah, you have someone fighting back, but it's someone that is more confident and more capable as opposed to... Yeah, these are just, like, teenagers that are kind of, like, bumbling around. And, yeah. like, you know, the like the... Uh, the brother Luke, you know, he's an athlete and stuff, so y- you know you would expect him to, you know, be in good shape and be able to hold his own a little bit. But still, like the, you know, these are older people uh, and obviously psychotic. So, like, it- it's still like, <laughs> obviously <a> little... <laughs> psychotic. <laughs> yes. it- it's still, it's kind of like, oh well, I mean, what are the chances that you know they'd be able to hold their own against them? Yeah, that, uh, like. I feel like there's there's some great moments be, be, that come from this, and it, it does kind of almost get there. I like the idea of the sequel being like, okay, no, no, they've met their match almost. Like so, this is someone <laughs> who can fight back, and it kind of has some moments like that, even though it's never really feels like, oh no, she's getting confident and she's fighting back with strength. It's just more just yeah. surviving by the skin of her teeth, and mm-hmm. you know, because it, 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 the whole final chase is actually him chasing her down a car, <laughs> um, and then and- which you know happens after like the cop. Because she actually, you know, the, the brother gets a call out to the to the sheriff, and the sheriff shows up and dies within about ten seconds of showing up. <laughs> yeah, he goes real fast. Which uh, again, it just feels like, uh, okay, like, are you trying to do like the same thing as the first one where you have this like random character pop in just to like, you know, get killed off? Like, I, yeah. I don't know if that's just like a weird thing they're trying to homage or. If it, or if it was just something like uh, they just had an idea for that, and like, oh, wouldn't it be shocking if I you think know, we that, killed the guy that's hopeful? Yeah, I think that's the point. I think the point is that this was the the sheriff. This is the hope of like help coming, but even the sheriff got taken out really quickly. You're on your own. Like you, you are, you know, you you have no one to help you. Uh, the moment I was speaking about earlier, where I was saying I would, like just to, that sort of encapsulated the disappointment uh, in terms of some of the scares is when she's like running from the car and she hides in the pipe right okay and and she's like hiding in the pipe and it's completely dark behind her i'm like okay one of them's going to like pop out of the darkness right they're just going to see <laughs> the mask come forward and it happened but somehow it was really underwhelming even though i thought it should be a good moment i i feel like i would have liked that better except for I, i'm pretty sure they showed that in the trailer they, they, i think they did once i which seen is, it i was like i recognized it yeah yeah because which it like uh i think like the like it looks cool because it is like complete darkness and yeah she does kind of come out of nowhere and it is like a good jump scare but yeah it feels like it, it was just kind of ruined by 
you know, just knowing it's there. But for me, the big problem was that she says something straight away. The the Betty Boop character, because this is the first time I think you see that mask in the movie. I think mm-hmm. she should have appeared out of the darkness without her character knowing and be there for like a good 10 seconds before she says anything. That would be good, yeah. But instead she pops out and just immediately says, we're just getting started. And I'm like, okay, yeah. well, just no. <laughs> like have her slowly like come out of the darkness, see the white. Kind of like how in, uh, I always compare this to Halloween, but in Halloween, remember when like Laurie's at the top of the stairs and she's crying, she's just discovered the bodies and Michael's oh, yeah. in the closet behind her and you just see the white mm-hmm. mask slowly appear out of the Ooh. darkness. Good scene. Yeah. That's the moment here that you want. You want this, the, the white Betty boot mask to just kind of slowly appear and then yeah. have her say something later. It, it's almost like the director doesn't have the patience to actually let the suspense build. <laughs> yeah, Every, Everything's like too quick. Everything's a little too snappy. And I don't think it works for the mm-hmm. type of characters that the, the strangers are as, as mm-hmm. killers. Uh, yeah. You know, so. it, it's kind of a shame because, you know, um, again, the first one, you know, like I said, I'm not, you know, crazy about. But the one thing I did like is, you know, that kind of subtlety of just showing them in the background and just kind of going about and you know not making big attention to it not having loud musical stings or the you know characters turn around and seeing them like in it's fact, uh another example of the loud musical sting where we wouldn't have had one the first one is so the, the kids find the, the the you know the uncle or whatever killed right and they go oh, and get yeah. they go find the parents and the dad and the son go back he's like hey show me son right where is it and they go in and they see the dead bodies and then they go to the door and they open the door and you know the, the main sack man is standing outside with an axe right Mm-hmm. as soon as you see him like in the music yeah. this big sting <laughs> and I'm like that would have been so much more effective if it was just mm-hmm. silence yeah definitely let, let the silence play like I just mm-hmm. I don't know I feel like it's, it's it feels overproduced I guess in that sense that there's just too much like bells and whistles mm-hmm. to try and make it work and I'm like no no take them away yeah. less is more less is more definitely and uh, I do like the the truck, like you said. Yeah, it, it was cool that it felt like its own character. Like it, it felt very animalistic, kind of like the shark from Jaws or something. The way it would kind of just appear and track them down, and then um, I kind of like by the end they they're going like really crazy, where it's just like on fire. And, oh yeah, like, still chasing. It's after she's, it's after she's killed the second girl, the one who came at the door asking for Tamara, which is the same name again, by the way. It's worth mentioning. Yeah, which she came and asked. For Tamara twice, it happened twice, which I thought was weird. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I don't think it was as effective as the first movie because this is the exact thing we saw in the first movie, so I didn't like exactly. doing it again anyway. But when she done yeah. it twice, I was like, okay, what's happening there? Why are we doing this twice? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> but she, you know, she takes the mask off. You know, why not? Like she dies, and then mm-hmm. uh, Kinsey gets in the car, in the cop car, and she's like, okay, I'm going to drive away. I'm going to try and get away, or at least radio for help with the, the cop radio. <laughs> And you just see the headlights turn on behind her. This was one of the good examples of something being behind them. It was the headlights mm-hmm. turning on behind her. And then, you know, he, he drives up and rams into the back of the car and does it a couple of times. And she gets out and she, like, notices there's gasoline leaking, so she sets it on fire. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, and this, this actually reminded me of the Terminator, where even after the fire, he's still alive. So that now the car is completely set in fire, but it's still, like, rolling after her really slowly, yeah. really suspensefully. Uh, <laughs> And then eventually gets out and just dies. That's basically what happens. Mm-hmm. He dies. Not, yeah, not before they. Uh, oh, and then uh, they end up doing a very um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of ending. Um, where you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for what? some reason. Yeah, I forgot about that for some reason. Oh, I watched this yesterday. Why did I forget about that? <laughs> it's uh, kind of it's, it's kind of forgettable. I think because yeah. I actually saw this. Um, I saw this twice because I thought saw it in theaters when it came out, and then you know rewatched it again, uh, you know for the podcast. But and then I I completely like blocked that out of my memory too. Yeah, for some reason, for some reason I I just remembered him falling over when he was like you know all burned and on fire, and then we're at the hospital scene. For some reason I blanked out this Texas Chainsaw ripoff moment <laughs> because it's the exact same thing where she runs out onto the road uh, for help, yeah. and just as she's like getting because because the guy he does keel over and it looks like he's dead. And mm-hmm. she gets out to the, the the road, the main road, and she gets a car. And just as she's talking to the person, like, he runs out coming after her. Uh, mm-hmm. And she's like, go, go, go. And she jumps in the back of the pickup truck. And it's the same thing where he's like, you know, he's at the back of the thing. And, uh, and he's like, instead of a chainsaw, he has an axe. Yeah. Uh, but of course, he's actually like grabbing out of the back, but he gets hit off. She hits him. Yeah. Hits him off. But uh, with the baseball bat. Was, oh, yeah, we need to talk about this, this setup for the baseball bat. <laughs> So you know how sometimes in movies they'll set something up early on so that it'll pay off later? 
And that's that's a good technique. It always it's usually satisfying when it's pulled off correctly because uh, it feels like no 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 they're paying off something that they have seeded throughout the film, and it'll be a big moment when it happens. Mm. So at one point during the movie, early on, when she's in a mood because she's been sent off to boarding school, and the brother tries to cheer her up, they start reminiscing, right? And we know he likes baseball, and she tells the story. You know, when I was young, I used to always want to play little league with you, and you never let me. And he's like, yeah, but you were so little, you could barely pick up the bat. And, it's, and they're using the baseball as this representation of their, you know, their brother and sisterhood, the friendship, and mm-hmm. the idea that she wasn't strong enough to, to do what she was supposed to. So sure enough, the, the little kid who's in the, the truck at the end happens to be wearing a baseball hat or whatever, and we see there's a baseball bat in the back, and she picks it up and whacks him in the face. And mm-hmm. it just, like, I like when they try and do this, but that, that, to me this kind of felt like... Oh, we've seen them do this in other movies. We're going to try and copy it. Where they set this up at the start so that when she hits the bad guy at the end, it means something. It means something about her backstory yeah. because you know she she couldn't pick up the baseball bat as a kid. You know. Yeah, it, it just felt like it didn't really feel organic. It, it, yeah, it just seems like weirdly forced. And yeah, you know, the person that was writing it was probably like, "Oh man, this is so deep. Like <laughs> people are gonna be like getting up and cheering when she finally grabs the bat." Like. But no, it's just like, it, it, yeah, it feels very, like, ham-fisted. <laughs> it is very ham-fisted. It's the same with the, a lot of the introduction stuff. I felt like the introduction to the family, it felt like, okay, this is someone who's watched a lot of other horror movies, and like, okay, so this is the section where we introduced the family, but it, something just felt kind of off about it. Like, it never really felt like it was clicking. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's a general complaint uh, that, that I'd have about the movie. So I suppose I, I, we should talk about the last scene, which... <laughs> so... The brother was was stabbed or whatever pretty heavily, and he was left for dead. But because um, you know, we, actually, we never even finished talking about the swimming pool scene. You know, because the, oh, yeah. the bag man shows up at the end of it and mm-hmm. ends up because the, the the son actually starts getting quite mouthy. He's like, "Ah, I killed one of yours. How does it feel, you piece yeah. of shit?" <laughs> uh, and they end up fighting in the pool, and we have this cool. You know, the music's playing, and it keeps getting in and out as it goes under the water. Like you know, under the water, the music goes muffled. Come out of the water, yeah. it comes on. Which is. Yeah, which uh, again was like a pretty good scene. Like I, mm. I like the way it was done, and you know, even the uh, you know the bag man like approaching and kind of just dragging the axe on the ground. The uh, I mean, not super original, but I thought it was like effective and you know looked and sounded cool. Yeah, it felt a bit more original in the when it was in the water though, because as he yeah, was like was... slowly, he was sort of like getting to him to try and grab him in the water, and it felt like well, they're both moving slower because they're in the water. So, you know, it's harder to move through water, but yeah, uh, he's he's getting to him. So that 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 had some of the suspense. I thought worked quite well. But he gets stabbed, he's left for dead, but it turns out he's alive. Like, we see him in the hospital bed at the end, and he's, like, on which, life support. Uh, and Which, uh, at that point, it's kind of, it, it's interesting uh, right then, because, uh, like, when I first watched it, I didn't really know what was going to happen, because you kind of assume that, you know, they're not going to kill off the strangers, but then it's like, oh, well, like, they just killed one, so, like, oh, maybe, you know, the brother and sister are going to survive this and take them out. But then, like, you know, you think the brother dies at that point, then it's kind of interesting just being, like, Okay, so are all of the, you know, are the strangers gonna win but lose one, or, you know, is the sister gonna survive? Like, a, I, I, I kind of liked that guessing, but then it kind of quickly becomes like, oh no, like, yeah, the they're gonna win. Yeah, um, but the ending I thought was kind of bullshit because oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, because they're just in the hospital room and she gets up to get a drink, she gets like a little cup of water, and she hears a knock on the door. And she looks terrified because now knocks on the doors are scary to her. And then the, <laughs> the music sting comes in and it just cuts the credits. Like, that's sure. Your, it, like, it feels like such a weird, like, we want that final sort of, like, moment of fear. That final sort of jump scare moment. But it just but, feels so forced because there's no actual tension in it. It's just, no, someone knocked at the door. Yeah. That's all it but is. Then you, and, but you also hear, like, the music from the Jack in the Box, which was from, like, an earlier scene. Oh, where yeah, you're right, yeah. She, like... Yeah, was playing a Jack in the Box, and as she played it, the you know one of the the blonde girl rose up. Um, but that that's so stupid though, because then are you are we supposed to believe that one of the strangers survived and is behind the door now? And if so, like you know the this movie gets a, away a little bit from what you know kind of come to expect from the strangers. But if there was someone behind that door, then the now you're like really like. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, they don't go into hospitals and like. <laughs> yeah, like they don't go into like buildings at like the hospital. That, that's, I mean, that feels weird because you know they go to isolated places where people are vulnerable. It yeah. feels weird because, I mean, they should all be dead. 
So if it is them, then we're going into Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, they can't be killed territory. Which up until now, they've not been playing it that way at all. <laughs> so, I don't know, it, it, it felt like such a really forced cheap ending just to get the little final, oh, dun dun dun, are they still around somehow? Yeah, very cheap. Because <laughs> I, I was actually, I, I really thought I was onto something with my, oh, he recruits the, the kids as his new, like this is this is how he recruits mm-hmm. new people to be the other two strangers, like he... Like some people who survive and kill, because because by the end of the film they've both killed someone. Like because it's actually the brother kills the first girl and then the mm-hmm. sister kills the other one, and I'm like, oh, he's made them killers. They're both killers now. Like I thought he was going to recruit them, and then that didn't happen. Yeah, I, I think that would have been much more interesting, but <laughs> unfortunately they do not go that route. That's uh, so, uh, a shame. Uh, I did kind of like that scene you mentioned though with the the sister, the girl rising, with the jack yeah, in the that, box. That was, yeah, that was nice. She was kind of. Because obviously, like, you know, you hear, you know, uh, Jack in the Box music playing, so you know something's going to happen at the end, but uh, you just kind of see a sheet in the background and it slowly rise. Uh, and again, it just kind of feels like that, you know, a little bit of a, a lived-in space where, mm. you know, you're not really noticing them at first. And, yeah, it was, it was uh, effective. Yeah. As it's kind of small, I don't want to, ra- ra- you know, I don't want to be too harsh on it because I think it's a decent mm-hmm. little movie to watch. Like, I, th- I think it's a fine little kind of just slightly above average kind of like fun time there's good moments in yeah. there um it's the sort of thing as a horror fan like yeah i'm happy enough to watch this i i think the problem with it is that i have these expectations after the first movie so yeah the, so on top of just the general complaints i may have there's a lot of things where i'm like no no but this would this feels really cheap compared to the first one or this doesn't feel mm-hmm. as well directed as the first one and that makes it suffer yeah. quite a bit for it yeah like like there, there were definitely cool parts and then there you know, definitely kind of cliche, generic parts. But I mean, overall, like, you know, watching it, I was like, well, it definitely could have been a lot worse. Um, but yeah, and, and also, like, I mean, you know, coming from, uh, you know, someone who's not a huge fan of the first one, it's like, you know, I don't really have much attachment to the characters or, you know, anything. Um, so I guess I didn't really have much expectations going in. Um, hmm. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of just like, it's a little bit down the middle for me where it's like, well, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't love it. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't co- hate it. A couple of small points I just wanted to mention. Uh, early on, remember in the first one, and keep in mind, the first one is 10 years old now. So yeah. we're at a point now where obviously everyone has smartphones. And sure enough, all four family members have their own phone. Uh, mm-hmm. But they, they do kind of deal with it in an interesting way where they come back to the cabin or the, 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 tr- the trailer and like all their phones are smashed. Like it's like someone's been here and someone's done this. And I'm like, okay, yeah. all right. Uh, it's kind of funny to me, though, that there's, there's like, four of them now, though. Like, this is what we have to do in horror movies, is that all four phones <laughs> that people had had to be smashed. Yeah. Um, and they made that point of the parents, like, taking the daughter's phone away so that, like, you know, it, it, at least explain why one of them was in the house or in the trailer. <laughs> Doesn't explain why none of them had their phones on them when they left. But, I mean, they all kind of left in a hurry because it seemed like something was wrong. So, it's, you know. Yeah. That's true. Whatever. Uh... Which I guess is what you could argue the second, uh, like, as Tamara here scene was for. It was to freak mm-hmm. them out enough that they'd leave so they could go in and do stuff. I suppose you could argue that. It was, it was yeah. tactics. It wasn't creepy stuff. It was tactics. Yeah. Yeah, because they're in a, um, they're in, like, this small trailer, so they can't really, it's not something you can kind of sneak into, like, you know, yeah, exactly, the other where yeah. they're in an actual house. Exactly. Uh, and another thing, I, I got weird vibes off, off the scene where the dad took the phone off the daughter, off Kinsey. Mm-hmm. Where he sat down next to her and put his arm around her, and there was and there was nothing necessarily wrong with that on its own. There's nothing weird about a dad sitting like that with his daughter. The problem I had was that Christina Hendricks gave him this glance, like she was uncomfortable with it. And I thought, <laughs> wait, why is that bothering you? And I'm like, is there a history here that we sh- like? Are we going down some sort of weird abusive father path? And we never did. Like that was not part of the movie at all. Yeah. If anything, the dad's met like a hero where he dies for his son. He's like, go son, run! I'll take on the, yeah. the killer and die. Um, that's weird i didn't really notice that i have to go back and look for that it was, uh, it was just the look that hendrix gave him that gave me a feeling like it's like she knows yeah. something's been on in the past and she's uncomfortable <laughs> now it was, it was weird uh, but you know i guess um uh, do you want to talk about the parents deaths real quick we didn't really mention those yeah sure um so i kind of like the um, like uh christine hendrix death um just the because it's like a very like uh like oh, like like it's not like over the top like it's a very simple thing but just like you know the idea of like kind of just 
standing there as like someone is like you know basically like and uh, kind of like cradling you from behind yeah like, th- that's what i like i like that the the girl who kills her the long-haired one the blondie she uh like it's almost like she kind of like spoons her from behind before she stabs her yeah is, and is it's it... like the mother is like can't really do anything because she's like just so focused on the daughter escaping and kind of like making sure she's okay but it's actually like a little like i thought it was like a little touching what you mean her sacrificing herself for a daughter yeah, well, yeah. All right, okay yeah, yeah. uh and it's kind of creepy the whole the whole cradling thing was kind of creepy as well yeah. so uh no nah, yeah you're right actually it's funny because as much as I'm, I'm making a lot of complaints i think the deaths themselves were kind of good like yeah. the because then the dad of course like he was driving with the son they're looking for the the wife and daughter and they just the, the strangers just throw a, a cinder block you actually see the the bag man come out and just like throw a cinder block at them and yeah. it makes them crash and he the dad's like impaled with a you know bit of bar or something like that uh and the son can't pull it out he's like just go just go get help find your sister get help and he's just he's left there and then the bag man just comes in the car and sits next to him because obviously the dad can't move he's impaled and he, he yeah. puts on the radio and he just looks for the right song yeah. and the dad begs him to like no oh, what are you doing let's talk about this you don't have to do this uh yeah. and then he just you know he kills him yeah which uh, i think that's one thing I, I do like about this movie more than the uh first one would be the death scenes but i guess it's just because there was more you know to be had in this like there was more characters <laughs> yeah we had yeah we had three kill scenes and well actually no, we had an all two because if you, if you count the stranger you girls count the strangers yeah, yeah. you get an all two so and even the um uh the old couple in the beginning kind of like you don't really see much but you don't see it yeah but i mean it's a it's got a bit of suspense there to, to build up for it and you see the aftermath actually i will call it one little cliche that bugged me when the kids find the body of like the, the uncle and auntie is like they come in and they notice the window it says you know hello 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 on the window right and then like yeah. one of them notices the bodies and then when you see the full room i'm like how did you not notice them sitting there tied up <laughs> and like flayed like the second yeah. you walked in the room this is bullshit like yeah. i don't know it's just, it's one, <laughs> one of those little things like there was, there was nothing obscuring your vision from them yeah. uh, and they had a sheet on don't get me wrong but the sheet had blood seeping through it it was still really like so, you, oh, know, sure, yeah. you would notice that first you would notice the the, the <laughs> seat sharp the, the seat sh- uh, sheet with blood coming through it and you know looking like there was someone sitting underneath it like you would notice that yeah. first it just it was yeah but i mean it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a minor complaint but it was like it's one of those little cliches that just bugs me oh definitely <laughs> but, hey, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's, uh anything else you want to uh, hit upon <laughs> yeah I mean, that's pretty much it um yeah like it's a uh, it wasn't very long it's like 85 minutes, minutes. Yeah. yeah so yeah, we pretty much covered all the beats yeah i, I think I was go back, just to go back to my thoughts on the music i think i do oh, kind of yeah. like the main theme that plays mm-hmm. but it does feel kind of dated and it doesn't necessarily feel like it belongs in a stranger's movie it feels like it belongs in a like i say a 90s slasher movie um mm-hmm. but i do think it was a bit over the top for this type of movie and then i think the rest of the score was just like you know loud stings every time something bad happened you know i was like nah mm-hmm. like you know yeah. be more subdued it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's the laugh track for a horror movie that's what it is <laughs> well, that's a good point actually yeah. i like putting it that way but yeah. hey and I, I stole that from it's someone like, i can't remember who said that but oh. i stole it from someone that's very good yeah yeah any anything where someone is basically telling you how you're supposed to feel is like it, it feels like you're not doing your job because the movie the sitcom or whatever should be telling you when to laugh when to be scared on your own it, it shouldn't you know need this outside thing no. to tell you no i mean just enhance it, it but it shouldn't be telling yeah. you what, how you feel i i was watching a a video online and they were uh, they were playing a clip from the big bang theory but they took out the laugh track oh i saw, I saw <laughs> was, this yeah <laughs> it's like so like oh wow this is like weird and it's but, awkward there's all these uncomfortable silences where the laugh track yeah. is supposed to go it's just like people making fun of uh people and then like taking like two seconds to reply <laughs> uh, big bang theory cancel yeah. it no no we finally got rid of rosan let's let's cancel uh yeah. big bang <laughs> theory. The next target yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if any of the people on that show have uh, got issues like rosan does though um although apparently uh i just saw today apparently abc are talking to producers about continuing the show in some way but without rosan <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, just just get rid of it. Uh, <laughs> There's I mean, plenty of other 
I, I get it. There's a lot of other people there that have just lost their jobs because Roseanne Barr's a racist well, that, job. That's, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah it, it does suck for them, definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it, just make a new, new show, put the, you know, transfer some people over there. Yeah, it doesn't have to be in the Roseanne uh, universe. Uh, or uh, it'd be kind of funny though if they did bring it back and it was remember that season of Two and a Half Men where Charlie Sheen left not that I watched Two and a oh, Half yeah. Men but I did watch the episode where the first one where he wasn't there just to see how yeah. they handled it because I was curious <laughs> and it was like no he died and yeah was it like in like a crazy horrible way or to like some like really violent way I, I can't think. remember how, how what the, the, the manner of death was but I remember the episode constantly cracking jokes about him as if no one cared and like you know yeah. there was jokes at the funeral and then other stuff but I never saw the rest of it um nor, nor, nor did i see the finale of two and a half men which from everything i've heard about what happened in that finale it was the biggest like f you to the fan base ever really yeah <laughs> it makes me kind of interested now they, ha- they had a lookalike a charlie sheen lookalike show up at the house at the end from behind spoilers <laughs> for the two and a half men finale should you care uh, but they had like a all episode they, they kind of hinting that you know charlie's character was showing up and at the end of the episode you see like someone from behind in like the Hawaiian shirt or whatever he used to wear. Yeah. And then a piano fell on his head before he oh. opened the door. And then it cut to the creator of the show, Chuck Lore, sitting on a, a director's chair. He just turns to the camera and says, winning. And that was the end of Two and a Half Men. Jesus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It's just... No. I, I don't know. It's bizarre. Anyway. Uh, uh, stupid. <laughs> stupid show. Yes, I, I agree. It's a mm-hmm. ter- terrible show. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, that's... Uh, the, Strangers Pray at Night it is a sequel that is is not bad, but is not anywhere near as good as the first one. Uh, there is some stuff to enjoy there if you're a horror fan, uh, which means, I guess, uh, gets to ratings. So, Tim, what would you rate The Strangers Pray at Night? So, I gave the first one a 5.5. And I think I'm going to give this one the, the same score, but I, I don't want... You know, I, I it's not because I think this is like just as good as the first one. Like I, I'd still say the first one is a better movie, um, but like I feel like you know there's some stuff I didn't like in the first one, and then some stuff I did like, and I, I kind of feel similar about this where there was some stuff that was done well that I did like, but then there's also a lot of stuff that I didn't yeah, like. So it it's... balances out the same, yeah, if you will. Um, I gave the first one a solid eight. Um, this one is going that high by any means. I think. 5.5 is not bad. I think I'm going to go slightly... I, I, I'm going to go with a 6, I think. I feel like... It's fair. It's one of those sequels where it's nowhere near as good as the first one, uh, but I still had some fun watching it, even if... I had a lot of complaints, sure, but mm-hmm. it was still a decent enough watch. I wasn't angry I watched that. I still had some fun with the kills and some of the some of the creepy moments. Um, and there was... You know, even if the pacing was off in the scares, some of the visuals of the scares were quite nice. So, yeah, it was 6 out of 10. It's not, it's not, it's not bad. Um... I have no idea if they're going to even try and make a Strangers 3, given they killed off all the strangers. I mean, again, I wouldn't put it past them to do some type of prequel beginning kind of bullshit. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll actually be set in the 90s. Well, that could be interesting, but... <laughs> I'll tell you this. If the two girl characters are like like 12 and 14 in this prequel, I'll, mm. I'll, I'll support it. Because that'd, be, that'd crack me up, those yeah. two kids killing people. Yeah, so, I mean, six cents came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if anything is like marginally popular, like if, if this made even like a decent amount of money, then I'm sure they'll do another movie. And well, like they do in all these franchises, they just can't help but not like over explain stuff. So, you know, if, if they're going to do another movie, I would not put it past them and be like, well, we got to explain where these people came from. Um. Yeah, and I'd hate that. Cause, I mean, I hate it in all of them. I think. You know, we didn't need multiple Texas Chainsaw prequels, That's and yet, and yet we have two of them somehow. I, I feel like half the series is like trying to go back to the origin. It really is. It really like, is. Um, although I feel like when we get to the hell, some of the Howling sequels, we're going to get to soon. We might be feeling the same <laughs> way about those. Because I mean, at we, least the last one we did was Howling the Original Nightmare. And I feel oh, like yeah. there's, there's there's going to be Howling Reborn soon, and then Howling <laughs> something or other. Well, at least those are like so batshit crazy that you never know what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, so, now that's Strangers Pray at Night. That, is, that has been Screams After Midnight for the week. So, thank you very much uh, for, for joining us on this journey 
of of semen of hamburgers right oh that reminds me <laughs> <laughs> gotta make some hamburgers <laughs> gotta make some semen uh <laughs> that too <laughs> <laughs> and uh this has been the sequel strangers play at night uh we will be back next week with something or other uh i think i know where it'll be <laughs> we're gonna be back next week with something <laughs> yes something or other yes uh but yeah, so of course, what you can do is you can. Uh, we, we're recording this a little bit in advance, so we don't know what the vote is yet. But there will be a vote on patreoncom TV. If you want to be a patron, or if you're already a patron, there'll be a, there'll be a vote up soon uh, for for the month of June, where you can vote for a movie that we'll do the following month. So you can do that. You can also submit movies to the crypt if you're a patron. Uh, you can go over and check it out and see if there's anything there that uh, you're interested in. Uh, but either way, it supports the supports the show, supports the channel, uh, as well uh, commenting and liking and subscribing, all those different things that we really like to say every the end of every video. Uh, but that is uh, that is us. So uh, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates if you was and I already said that part. Anyway, uh, Tim, what's your Twitter? Uh, at Tim Vargulish, and you can get me at Wibble eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Um. You can also occasionally get me on Twitch. Uh, we've got a Twitch channel mm. called Mail Fuzz TV, uh, which is just occasionally me playing a game or two uh, every so often. I'll have to wrangle Tim in for a stream one night so he, so he can come mm. and talk to both of us. But That can, sounds fun. Yeah, yeah but, we, we do a, a horror game. We haven't done one in a while. We should. We should do it. We should make, a, mm. make plans for a horror game night. Uh, sounds good. And schedule it and tell them when it is and they can come and talk to us. Uh, mm. So it's not just me getting all the flack for, for, for streams <laughs> for a change. <laughs> Uh, but that is uh, that is Screams After a Minute so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching scary movies guys and we'll see you next time